Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm gonna show you how to save colors and even gradients in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and I wanna thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, if you look at me and think something is different about this guy, well, after years of creating tutorials, I finally switched my camera, so when I point to the right, it's also the right on your screen. Amazing. Well, okay, let's get started here and think about picking colors and saving them. So there's two ways in Affinity Photo mainly to pick colors. One is the color picker tool here on the left side, and this has some unique functions, but also you will find a color picker almost anywhere in Affinity Photo where a color needs to be used. So for example, if you're in the gradient tool and you click here on the color for the gradients, you see here by color, when you click on that, you also get a color picker or if you have a rectangle and you click here on fill or stroke, you also get a color picker. There is endless amounts of color pickers. Use them, my friends, they are completely for free. All right, let's go on here and talk about the specific functions that our color picker tool has over these other color pickers. Because here you can see, you can set a source for current layer or global and you can set a radius. And this is also the interesting part here because usually a color picker is going to pick a single pixel. And that might be good for most cases where you want to have kind of a color here from that brown page. That's nice, but when we zoom into that, you can see there's actually a lot of different values for this kind of brown here. Some are a little bit more orange, some are a little bit more green, some are a little bit more blue, some are brighter, some are darker, some are more or less saturated. So it has a ton of different stuff going on. So to fix this, we can go here and select a radius that is bigger. These radiuses are always going to be square from the format and these numbers here are individual pixels. So you can have an average of three by three pixels, meaning that nine pixels are selected in a square format and then an average is created from all of the color values are found in these nine pixels. And of course you can go even bigger if there's a lot of variation in these colors. Now. What does source mean? Global or current layer? How do we understand that? Well, global means it picks from whatever you're seeing right now on your screen. Sometimes you have a lot of layers and some of these layers are changing the look of your color. So for our example, let's create here an HSL layer and we switch the color over like this. Now we have a green. And when I pick that, you can see over here on the right side that this color that I've picked is indeed green as we see it with our eyes. But what if I want to pick the original color from that layer? Well, of course I could turn off all of the layers that influence that layer, but maybe that's very complex if let's say you have 50 or 60 or 70 layers that might be very hard to figure out which layers influence the colors of that original layer. So instead we go here to source current layer and even though it looks green to us, I still can click here and I get this kind of brown value from my original page. So that can be very helpful. Now let's go on to the question on how do I save these colors? Now, when you want to save them, suddenly you have something that's called swatches. That's very fancy and you have to search for that. So it's a tab here called swatches and there you have these collection of colors but also of gradients. If you don't see that tab, well, then you want to go as always to view and then studio. Here's a list of all the tabs and down here we have swatches. Make a check mark next to that. Okay, how do we make one of these fancy palettes here to save our own colors in here? Well, we have to go up here to these three lines. A menu opens for that. And here it says add application palette, add document palette. Now, what does that mean? A document palette is only good for this specific document. And this can be nice if you want to save the colors inside of the document when you, for example, send the file afterwards to a colleague or to a customer, stuff like that, the colors are saved in the document, right? When you have an application palette, the colors are going to be saved in Affinity Photo 
on your computer so they are part of your software not of the documents very big difference and usually you are going to use an application color so you can use these color choices also in all the other documents afterwards right so choose one of these two and then click on that and you can see it gives you the unnamed two or any other number if you have already created some of those and it doesn't sound too good it's not very specific so you want to rename that for that go to these three lines again and then select here rename palette and you can rename that of course to anything you want we call ours fancy pansy colors there we go boom so we have a really nice name for our colors now how do we get the colors in there when we pick them how do we pick them anyways right we have seen the tools but where do we find the colors we have picked well when we go with our color picker over here you pick a color let's use one of these reds down here like so and you see this has been picked but it's not active yet so you have to click on that circle here and now this has become active now you can see down here in recent colors it is not showing up why what's going on well the reason for that is recent is referring to the recently used colors not to the recently picked colors and that makes sense because you want to see the colors you actually use not the ones you pick randomly or on accident right so an easy way to get that in there is to have a rectangle for example you can use like that and it's a little easy trick a little bit of secret sauce here so now you can see that this has become an active color here and here's a very nice trick on how to get that over into your palette because you cannot really drag that in here although it looks like that you can drag the color onto the rectangle but not into the menu kind of makes sense because you don't want to accidentally drop colors in there so how do we get it over here well you can right click now on your rectangle and there it tells you that you can add two swatches from fill and again be careful it says from fill from line from both and also from fill as global and the other choices also as global now we have to talk a little bit about what is fill what is line and what is both so you can see here this down here is a fill color and this up here is the line color so you can see when I now add a line to my rectangle here this line here you can see that now the black up here is indeed my line color and when I click on these arrows here and I switch that you can see it also switches here so that's important for us for the reason when we save a color we could either save it as a fill color or as a line color or as both of them right so that's important for us on the way it is applied afterwards right so let's switch this over again and I want to save this let's say as a fill color so I right click here I go to add swatches and I say from fill and this will go directly into the palette that I have selected right now so this is actually a quite quick process like that and so like that you can also simply select other colors I activate them and this is the secret sauce like I said before as long as you have your rectangle active this will also switch to the fill color of the rectangle and then I can again right click add to swatches from fill and there I have this other color so you can really quickly create colors like that now let's create a gradient so I want to create the gradient also inside of my rectangle like this I use a gradient tool for that let's draw it like that and then as you can see here I can go in here and then adjust colors any way I want and of course in a gradient you can have more than two colors so this already looks pretty nice but if you want to say I have another color in the middle or even multiple colors if you want to create more complex gradients more complex gradient effects you can simply click on that line here and this will create another color point where you can enter another color let's make this for example a nice light blue and so we have this kind of rainbow unicorn looking gradient like that now 
Another important thing here is when you save a gradient, it also saves the type of gradient with that. So it's not independent from that. So if you want to have a linear gradient, you have to set it up like that. But afterwards, if you create a radial gradient and you click over here on the linear gradient, that radial gradient is not just changing the colors, it's also changing the type of the gradient. So again, this is pretty important. Now, the process is basically the same after that. You right click on that, you say add to swatches and then from fill. And you can see now I have my gradient here. And again, when I switch this over, let's say to radial, and I save this over here, right click, add to swatches from fill, you can see that I'm getting a radial gradient from this. And the preview will always have the center in the middle of that little preview here, not on the side as it looks here. So when I create another rectangle like this and I click here, you can see that this is updating and you can see when I click on the linear one, it's becoming linear on the radial, it's becoming radial. And also, of course, with the other choices. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you like that video, because this really helps me a lot. See you in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.